as important as Trump's fascism is and is the lead story every day. His cozying up to uh, dictators, his uh, obsession with Hitler that has now come out, what he has said about our veterans and what he wants to do with the military against his political adversaries. It's all huge news. This is the future that we're looking at in the next Trump term, if there is one. But this is what voters know right now, that he is killing us. I'm talking about us women. He's killing us. He is putting us at risk. He is making us afraid to have babies. He is putting our reproductive health at risk. And some women have died already because of this. So we can see right now what's coming. These headlines and very good reporting, by the way, that shouldn't be questioned by idiots about what Trump has said about Hitler. That's incredibly important to know. But I do understand that people who are busy and that are people who are just tapping in may not be able to comprehend because we've been free. We've been comfortable. We cannot comprehend that. And it, I understand that. I validate that it is hard to go from here to there. It is where we're going. I hope we don't find out the hard way. But what's happening with women right now is real and it is playing out across America. So yesterday we learned that Donald Trump's former chief of staff, John Kelly, a retired four-star general, confirmed that while Donald Trump was president, he said he wanted generals like Adolf Hitler had. Donald Trump said that because he does not want a military that is loyal to the United States Constitution. He wants a military that is loyal to him. He wants a military who will be loyal to him personally, one that will obey his orders even when he tells them to break the law or abandon their oath to the Constitution of the United States. In just the past week, Donald Trump has repeatedly called his fellow Americans the enemy from within and even said that he would use the United States military to go after American citizens. And let's be clear about who he considers to be the enemy from within. Anyone who refuses to bend a knee or dares to criticize him would qualify in his mind as the enemy within, like judges, like journalists, like nonpartisan election officials. It is deeply troubling and incredibly dangerous that Donald Trump would invoke Adolf Hitler, the man who is responsible for the deaths of six million Jews and hundreds of thousands of Americans. All of this is further evidence for the American people of who Donald Trump really is. This is a window into who Donald Trump really is from the people who know him best, from the people who worked with him side by side in the Oval Office and in the Situation Room. 
And it is clear from John Kelly's words that Donald Trump is someone who I quote, certainly falls into the general definition of fascist, who in fact vowed to be a dictator on day one and vowed to use the military as his personal militia to carry out his personal and political vendettas. Donald Trump is increasingly unhinged and unstable. And in a second term, people like John Kelly would not be there to be the guardrails against his propensities and his actions. Those who once tried to stop him from pursuing his worst impulses would no longer be there and no longer be there to rein him in. So the bottom line is this, we know what Donald Trump wants. He wants unchecked power. The question in 13 days will be, what do the American people want? Thank you. Let's turn to the US now where Kamala Harris has called Trump a fascist. She also appeared at a town hall today with Anderson Cooper on CNN. Have a look. Yes, I do believe that Donald Trump is unstable, increasingly unstable and unfit to serve. Do you think Donald Trump is a fascist? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. He admires dictators sending love letters back and forth with Kim Jong Un. Now, the only problem with this argument is that Trump has already been president and he wasn't a fascist while he was in office. You might not have liked everything he did, but he wasn't a fascist. Um, do you think this is stretching it, uh, taking it just a bit too far <laughs> when the Democrats and, you know, Kamala Harris, who's running to be president, accuses him of fascism? It's pretty amazing. She's lucky that's the headline that came out of that interview. I watched it and unfortunately it was tragic when even Anderson Cooper you know, a copper for the far left in America is out there correcting her and pulling her up and stopping her and reminding her she's been the vice president through all this time she's saying she could have done, they should have done better. Um, that's the headline of this. CNN is being very, very generous with the fascism thing, which is just, I mean, it, it's trivial political point scoring, you know, anything with an IST at the end of it at this time at the election campaign is just mud flinging. Um, you're right, you're spot on. People know what Trump is. Even if they don't like him, they know what they're going to get because they've seen it before. And mm. that's her problem because they've seen her before too and she's underwhelming. I think that's a good point you made, though, that in saying that, in agreeing, agreeing or saying that he is a fascist again, that is now the headline out of that interview rather than all of the other weak yeah. answers that she gave. We are going to come back to those answers because I've got Trump's former acting attorney general on the show later this hour. But, Basil, there, have, there has been criticism that um, given Trump has already faced two, potentially three, assassination attempts on his life, that by calling him a fascist by claiming that he likes Hitler, this dangerous language could once again incite violence against him. What do you think of that argument? Well, that's, uh, that's possible and uh, a, a case could be made for that argument. Uh, I think what it really reeks off, though, is desperation here from Kamala Harris, trying to reverse the trend that's sliding away from her and towards Trump. Uh, this is his third time around the block in terms of a presidential campaign, and it's at the 11th hour of the third occasion when he stood before the American people and asked for them to consider him to be their president of the United States. It doesn't matter that they call him a fascist or any of the other stuff. They've already judged him on all of those things. It's not about Trump and what people think of him. It's really about what they think of Harris. And I don't think she's done enough to give anybody enough confidence that she's a leader of substance in waiting. Yeah, there was a good line actually in, a, in an article in the Sydney Morning Herald I read earlier that effectively Trump has been running for office for nine years, Kamala Harris just for 100 yeah. days. So he's a very mm. well-known quantity to, to everyone around the world. They know what they're getting. But Kamala, there are still, there's still concerns, there's still uncertainty about what she actually stands for and what she do in office.